If you live in Gaza City and received one of these red leaflets this weekend, you might not be sure whether this was a warning or a threat. To residents of Gaza, your presence in the North puts your life in danger. Whoever chooses not to leave the North to the South might be identified as an accomplice in a terrorist organization. Signed, the Israeli army. Israel says it has every intention of moving into Gaza. Tonight, growing expectations of an Israeli ground offensive into Gaza. But we've been hearing that for more than a week now. So let's weigh Israel's state of readiness against all the reasons it has to wait. That shimmer in the sky, that's what thousands of leaflets look like from below. The red leaflet I showed you earlier was actually the second most recent drop. This barrage of messages from above was from just over a week ago when the IDF, the Israeli army, gave a million Palestinians 24 hours to leave the entire northern half of Gaza. Green leaflets warning that anyone who stayed would be risking their lives. In the northern Gaza Strip, the beginning of a mass exodus, the streets filled with confusion after Israel's military gave residents 24 hours to leave and relocate south. And with a second round of warnings has come a dramatic intensification of airstrikes across Gaza, but especially in and around Gaza City. This evening, we're seeing and witnessing the most heavy and sustained airstrikes and artillery strikes on, on Gaza, on this northern end of Gaza, uh, I think, than we've witnessed over the past two weeks. Gaza's north, a major front if and when Israeli troops decide to push in. Gaza City itself seen as critically important to Hamas. Just in the last 10 minutes, there have been about 10 huge missile strikes uh, going into the northern part of Gaza. Gaza City is, is the, uh, it's the epicenter of Hamas activities. There's a huge amount of underground tunnels that Hamas has built. These tunnels are a pretty crucial part of you know, Hamas's military infrastructure. They use them to move personnel around the Gaza Strip and towards the border of Egypt. They use them to smuggle and store goods and weaponry. In the south, too, the war is escalating. Just on Sunday, one of the very first skirmishes we've seen between the IDF and Hamas inside Gaza, east of Khan Yunus. Israeli airstrikes struck targets in Gaza today, while IDF soldiers also fought with Hamas militants during raids into the enclave. Reuters calls them limited overnight raids that Israel says were partly intended to gather intelligence. But in a Telegram post, the armed wing of Hamas says it destroyed a tank and two military bulldozers in an ambush. Israel confirmed one of their own soldiers was killed, three injured. We're hearing about clashes uh, near that border fence with Khan Yunus. That means Israeli troops, certainly confirmed by the Israeli army, are mounting operations on that side of the fence, and Hamas have reacted to this. Then another attack this weekend, a rare airstrike in the occupied West Bank. The target, a mosque that the IDF claimed was a command center to plan and execute attacks against civilians. On social media, it also posted what it claims are diagrams of the compound, including dig sites, weapon stores, and electronic equipment. Now, bear in mind, we haven't been able to assess the accuracy of these allegations or diagrams ourselves. The Palestinian Authority called the attack a dangerous escalation saying at least two people were killed and three injured. Since the war began, nearly 100 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank, mainly in clashes with Israeli troops. There have been multiple indications that a ground invasion was going to happen soon and then didn't. I'd say there have been two or three false starts so far. I do think that it does look a bit chaotic from abroad as we watch what's going on here. on the Israel-Gaza Strip border, where thousands of Israeli paratroopers, snipers, artillery units, tank units are preparing for what is expected to be a major ground offensive in the coming days. The thing is, Israel has more than its own wishes to consider. Any ground assault must also take into account the United States. 
the U.S. is Israel's closest and strongest ally. Military aid from the U.S. makes up about 16% of Israel's total defense budget. And right now, Joe Biden has at least 10 very specific reasons for Israel to stay its hand. Look. On Friday, in this video prepared and released by Hamas, we see two Israeli-American hostages freed, Judith Ronan and her 17-year-old daughter, Natalie. Just to let it rip and get you out, we've been working on it a long time. We're gonna, we're gonna get them all out, God willing. That's two out of 12. The U.S. State Department believes there may be up to 10 more American hostages in Gaza right now. And every expert I've heard seems to agree an Israeli ground offensive would almost certainly put an end to any further negotiations for hostage release. And Hamas likely knows this. Because even if it's not clear that Hamas received anything in return for releasing these two hostages, what this may buy them is time, especially as they have signaled a willingness to release even more hostages. Two Israeli hostages released this evening by Hamas. Now, the women you are looking at are elderly Israelis. There is a very good chance that the moment that Israel puts boots on the ground, that is the moment that those um, hostages um, cease living, um, that Hamas would murder them. The U.S. also needs time to bolster its defenses in the region. It has already doubled its aircraft carrier strike force, sending not one, but two teams into the Mediterranean. But the U.S. fears a wider war. We expect uh, that there's a likelihood of escalation, escalation by Iranian proxies directed against our forces, directed against our personnel. That includes personnel not just in Israel, but in other parts of the Middle East, including in Iraq. On Sunday, the State Department advised all of its non-essential government employees to leave its embassy in Baghdad and its consulate in Erbil, citing increased threats of terrorism, kidnapping, armed conflict, and civil unrest. And the previous day, a statement from the Defense Secretary that the U.S. is sending a Thad battery and Patriot battalions to the region to protect U.S. forces. Now, Thad stands for Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, and it looks like this. It shoots down missiles. PATRIOT is also an acronym. I'll spare you what it stands for. But it also is an advanced surface-to-air missile defense system. We are taking steps to make sure that we can effectively defend our people and respond decisively if we need to. But again, to underline the point, the U.S. would like time. Now, the U.S. has been clear. It doesn't tell Israel what to do. We're not in the business of second-guessing what, uh, what they're doing. Israel has not only the right, as we've said, but the obligation uh, to defend itself. But that hasn't stopped other international players from urging Israel to proceed with caution. We repeatedly said that uh, uh, the barbaric attack by Hamas uh, need to be condemned. But I've also said they cannot be a pretext for a collective punishment of the Palestinian people. The UN has called for a ceasefire. And a poll by an Israeli daily newspaper on Friday suggests only 65% of Israelis supported an extensive ground operation in the Gaza Strip. Just over 20% opposed. This, as much of the world asks Israel for more time on humanitarian grounds as well. There is not even 1% of a good, healthy, and safe life for a child. There is no safety. If we don't die from war, we will die from epidemics and diseases. Only three aid convoys, totaling a few dozen trucks, have so far been able to enter Gaza through Egypt. As with hostage negotiations, any large-scale ground offensive would make delivering and receiving humanitarian aid that much more difficult. So, is Israel ready to strike? It would say it is, and has been, perhaps for many days now. But what's equally true is that in war, there is rarely a good time to go in. And whether Israel's window of opportunity is growing or shrinking is anyone's guess.